All right, morning, folks. Good to have y'all here this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. And so um, uh, it's great to have y'all here on this uh, 5th of July. And uh, I think we've got a lighter crowd today because some people were up partying and watching fireworks last night a little bit too late. But, uh, <laughs> but it was still a really good time. Hopefully y'all had a wonderful 4th of July and maybe got on the water or did something fun and uh, remembered those that um, uh, gave, uh, gave everything for us, for uh, the freedoms that we enjoy and, and uh, the country that we love. Even though it's not perfect, clearly we're not perfect, but uh, God is at work in the world and in us. Thanks be to God. So um, uh, just a, a reminder about River of Life services. We'll go about um, a half hour this morning. Today, um, we are going to uh, observe communion together. And so if you're watching us live at home, uh, you can join us at home. Uh, just grab some crackers and some juice or bread and juice. And uh, if you want to, we uploaded a, uh, a liturgy if you want to follow along with that this morning. So you can, uh, you can do that as well. But, uh, and then uh, for all of us here, we have, uh, we have one over here and we have uh, communion elements over here. So feel free to, to grab those if you haven't already done that. So um, uh, we're also excited to have David Dowdy sharing a message with us this morning. We're uh, super excited to have Ralph with us playing some songs and music with us this morning. And so um, we hope that uh, you are blessed in this time together. So uh, let's join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us to this place. We thank you for the gift that is the river of life. We just uh, ask that you would bless this time and draw us near to you and near to each other and be bound together by love. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to invite Ralph to come on up and start us in a song. Sound good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, either one. So, uh, good morning. I hope everybody is safe and well. Um, I'm... Um, uh, I'll do a, a communion-based song because this morning is a feast that we're sharing together. And um, I've, uh, the song is titled, Here is Bread, Here is Wine, A Feast from God Divine. In fact, you can hum along while we're doing communion. I'll repeat it then. Okay? Here is bread grown from the dust. by tears from heaven. Here is bread, food for your life and soul. Holy ones, be our guest. Here is wine grown from the dust of earth. tears from heaven. Here is wine, food for your life and soul. Holy ones, be our guest. Here is bread, here is wine, a feast from God divine. Here is bread from, from the dust of earth. Here is bread watered by tears from heaven. Here's a feast food for your life and 
one's home. Holy ones be our guest. Holy ones be our guest. Amen. All right. Thanks, Ralph. Appreciate it this morning. And um, so I just wanted to share some of our God sightings this morning that have been passed along this morning. So from Terry on Zoom, uh, she said a co-worker had surgery on, on their foot and uh, is doing great. So that is awesome. So thanks for that God sighting. Um, uh, we're thankful for the gift of God's creation and the beauty that surrounds us. Uh, both here and uh, and where you are, I'm sure. Even though it may not be as cool as here. Um, so we are grateful for uh, the river, our church family, and communion today. And then um, last week, if you joined us, you might have heard the prayer request about um, Tom's boat, who was um, uh, or, or got lost off of his car. Now, y'all must be some pretty good prayers because guess what? They found Tom's boat, and it is back home, and he is paddling it. So he is a happy man. So that is wonderful. So thank you for your prayers on that. And, um, and so we uh, continue prayer requests because y'all are so good pr at praying, right? And so um, we continue prayer requests this week. And so we uh, continue to pray for uh, Christina's knee and, and job uh, and her job situation and, and all that right now. And um, uh, we also lift up those that are dealing with uh, COVID-19 and for, yay, uh, for COVID-19 and um, those that are, are struggling with that sort of thing. And uh, hey, great news. We've got more God sightings. And so God sightings are Leah, Emma, and Tiffany. Woo! How about that, huh? Y'all are our God sighting today. Thank you. Good to see y'all this morning. And so um, for those that are, uh, uh, but keep our prayers for those that are uh, struggling with COVID-19, um, either in the sickness or in just whatever way that you're engaged with it right now. I mean, we're all, really, we're praying for ourselves, aren't we? Because at some level, we're all in this COVID-19 thing together. And so uh, I'm grateful for those of us and how we are able to um, continue to lift each other up and protect each other by wearing masks and, and that sort of thing. So just uh, thank everybody for your prayers for that and for your actions in that. We also want to lift up uh, Eddie Sahaki, who continues to battle uh, substance abuse and, uh, and uh, homelessness. So we ask your prayers for him. him and, and then Kim uh, Bonin, right? Isn't that how you say it, Sam Bonin? And just ask that you would keep her in prayer and then also Judy Brandt as well. So uh, please keep them in your prayers. And then we also lift up the names of Marty Bates, Joe Bates, Trey, Jessica, James, and Henry also. And all those that are, that are in our hearts that have not been lifted up today as well, but uh, that are in our hearts that we, we, uh, we want to lift up in prayer. So right now, let's go ahead and uh, turn our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious God, you breathe new life into us. You help us to see you. You open our eyes, you open our ears, and you show up. You show up in creation, you show up in love, you show up in the face of other people. You show up in kindness and in generous actions. God, you show up in the peace that you give us in the midst of chaos. You show up in healing, you show up in grace, you show up in hope that brings light into all dark places. Oh God, help us to, to see you every day. Help us to pay attention to keep our eyes open because life, oh God, can be a struggle. Life can be hard, life can 
be filled with darkness. It can be filled with sickness. It can be filled with hurt. It can be filled with loss. And yet, O oh God, we know that you are there, that you are with us, that you love us, and that you want the best for us. Oh God, we ask that you would fill our hearts today and open our minds and open our ears to, to hear you speak into the world, to hear you speak into our lives, to give us healing, to give us hope, and to guide us in grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so uh, this morning... Uh, I'm excited to, to introduce to you David Dowdy, who is uh, uh, doing some intern stuff with us this summertime from, um, uh, from Asbury. And so um, one of the things that uh, he needs to do is he needs to give a message. And so I'm delighted. He's given us a message before, and uh, it was so well received that uh, I'm pretty thrilled to let him uh, bring us a, a message of hope. And grace this morning, and I think it's well suited for the day. So thanks, Dave. I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning. Thank you. I tend to move around, so if I need to just grab this, y'all let me know. Okay. okay. Now we on? Okay. So I tend to move around a little bit. If I need to pick it up and, and do that, just let me know. Um, but good morning to everyone. It's just nice to be able to worship with you here in person for the River of Life. And for those of you who are joining us online, it's a pleasure to have you here as well. I'm going to do my best with this mask. But um, I hope that every one of you had a nice chance to relax and celebrate the Independence Day. Uh, I'm just going to do this. Okay. And I also hope that uh, you were able to just reflect a little bit on the freedom that we have. And uh, that's actually what I wanted to, to talk about today is what do we mean when we talk about freedom? And so just a short message on that. But, uh, you know, we live in a really wonderful country. We have problems that we still need to work through. But, uh, you know, we can come here and worship together or not worship however we see fit. We can still travel around the country if we want. We can still pursue our passions and our dreams. And we live in a really wonderful country. And freedom is a wonderful thing. But the funny thing about freedom is that even though we're free, you still have to live like you're free. See, freedom requires a response. And though it's offered, we can still live our lives in a way that robs us of our freedom and robs us of our joy. And in addition to that, the choices that we make, the way we respond to our freedom also has consequences. It's not free from those consequences. There's an action, there's a reaction. Okay, we all know that. So some of us, though we're free, we feel like we may have to get a certain job or make a certain amount of money to fit into society. Some of us may feel like we have to get a high level of education to have a meaningful impact on this society. And even some of us may feel like we have to change the way we look or change the way we talk for those of around us to love us. And while it appears that a lot of times that we're free, I fear that a lot of times inside our heart, we still remain in bondage. And a lot of that I think is that while it appears that we're still free, we put a lot of this burden on ourselves. It's a burden to fit into society and to be part of it by following the laws and the customs that we have. Uh, it's a, a toil day in and day out, trying to find meaning for our lives and trying to see how we fit in. And to be honest, it's an exhausting race to be in and it doesn't seem to have an end. But the interesting thing is that we in this country are not alone in sharing these frustrations. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians about 2,000 years ago, actually shared his frustrations with these new Gentile Christians and how they had chose to burden themselves with trying to fit into society and live by the laws and the customs around them, despite the grace that they had been given by Jesus. And you see, the Jewish Christians that were there were trying to convince them that, hey, if you want to truly be Christian, you have to live by the Jewish laws. They'd say to them things like, if you want to be truly a Christian, you have to follow our festivals, our rituals. You have to talk this way. You have to act this way. 
And oh, by the way, you have to accept Jesus as your Messiah. So you see, what the Jewish Christians were doing is they were putting roadblocks. They were putting regulations and rules in front of these new Galatians. And even though at best they could barely follow the laws they put in place themselves. And so by the time we get to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, Paul is already pretty worked up. And he tells them emphatically in verse 1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You see, the Galatians were trying to earn their salvation by observing the law, an impossible task, rather than just resting solely on the grace of Jesus. And in doing so, they had become enslaved to the law. They surrendered their freedom in Christ and became captives to the law. But remember, Jesus himself said that I have come to set the captives free. In his mercy, God meets his people right where we are. And he frees us from the impossible burden of the law. In Christ alone, we are free from the burden of the law. We are free from sin. We are free from death. Our minds are freed to rest in the confidence that God is not angry with us, but actually is merciful upon us. Now, I'm not saying that the law the Galatians are trying to follow was bad. It's actually good. And it paints a vivid picture of just how unholy we are and how desperately we need a Savior. So the law cannot save us, but it points us to the Savior. The Galatians had forgotten this and were trying to earn their salvation. And what a terrible burden that must have been to bear. So Christ has made us free. Now, in this country, we tend to think of freedom as the ability to do whatever we want, to satisfy all of our desires. But actually, I think this is a false liberty because you'll notice that this type of freedom is inwardly focused on the individual. And you can see a lot of parallels with the way we view freedom today and the way perhaps the Galatians did back then. And listen to what Paul says when you get to verse 13. He tells them again, You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, we're reminded here that the focus of our freedom is not inwardly on the individual, but an outward focus on loving each other. And in doing so, we actually fulfill the law. You see, the Galatians are trying so hard to fit into society and to observe the law that they forgot the most important part, and that was to love one another. How often today do we get so caught up in this rat race and trying to fit into society around us that we forget that the essence of the freedom that we've been given is to love those around us? So the yoke that we put on ourselves, this burden to fit in, really is an impossible burden. And so I wonder, in what ways might you have become enslaved to this world in the endless quest to fit in? What kind of yoke of slavery have you put on yourself? And then I would ask, who are you carrying all these burdens for? Jesus tells us in Matthew 11, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the irony of being offered this freedom in Christ is that we so often give away that freedom just to be re-enslaved to this world. And it's ironic because to hold on to this freedom actually requires discipline. Not because Christ's grace is insufficient for us, but because we are so easily led astray. Living in freedom takes practice. In much the same way as a runner who would want to run a marathon, or a paddler who might want to conquer the biggest rapids, to love one another well takes practice. It's not complicated, but loving one another takes practice. So love 
is not just an emotion like we tend to see it. Love is an action. And the action, Christ's loving action for us, sets us free from sin and death. It sets us free from the burden of trying to conform to this world. And it allows us the freedom to love God and to love people. And in doing so, fulfill the law. So as we prepare to celebrate this freedom that we have to come together freely in communion with our Lord Jesus and with each other, I'd like to challenge you and encourage you to think about what burdens you're carrying. Put them down at the feet of Jesus and go out and actively love one another. And in doing so, you're fulfilling the law. And then just rest easy in the presence of God. Remember, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we are thankful that you are a God of mercy and love. We are thankful that you have come to us to set the captives free. Time and time again in our brokenness, you graciously meet us right where we are, and you offer us freedom in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, I pray you will teach us to use that freedom to love those around us, even those who are sometimes the hardest ones to love. Teach us to be merciful as you are merciful. Teach us to love as you love. Help us to deliver the good news that you have come to set the captives free. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus who sets us free that we pray. Amen. Thanks, Dave. Well, I love that message, and I love what he's saying about freedom and, and how uh, I, I remember the story of Jesus kind of gathered up with his disciples all around the table on the night before that he was going to go all the way to prove God's love for us, right? And to, to give us freedom, and, and they were celebrating this supper together, this festival together with his disciples that's all about freedom, it's all about freedom. Of, of, so this Passover was when the, the Jews, this whole nation, had escaped bondage of slavery. And so they celebrated it year after year for generation after generation after generation. And, and so Jesus told his disciples, he said, hey guys, look. This dinner is about freedom. This freedom that I've given you, just as like, like Dave was saying. It's like, you get to enjoy this freedom. But he reminded them to take this freedom and to love each other and to care for each other. And so today we have an opportunity to, to remember that freedom as we share together. And so uh, those of you who have the liturgy, if you would, uh, follow along with me. Those of you who are at home, you can go ahead and get your, uh, your juice and your crackers and, and have them ready. And um, please join us. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God. With breathtaking beauty, you created this world and continually offer redemption and healing to every place of brokenness. You created us one family beyond all divisions, and you have given us a great gift of sharing in your love. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we lift our voices to join their unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When Jesus was on earth, he invited people to a transformed whole life. From the beginning of his public ministry, he called others to share in his ministry. Today we give thanks that he was called us to follow him in example teaching and resurrection power 
He's called us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all. May the sharing of this meal seal us anew for our high calling. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For at your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and cup, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Heal all that keeps us from the wholeness, that we may go with power to release resurrection into the world. Lift our eyes to the power of the ascended Christ. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with others, and single-hearted in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Deepen our faith and renew our communion with each other and your church. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So we invite you now to, to take of the elements, eat the bread, drink the juice, whatever you have. And so we are reminded of Jesus' love for all and that the freedom that we can have through his grace and mercy. May we share that same grace and mercy and love with those around us as we go from this place. For those of you who are at home, we invite you to, to think on these things. But we're going to end our live stream service right now as we invite those that are here to to find a rock and think on these things for about five minutes and then we're going to come back together for a closing song so please go find a rock and we'll collect y'all here in just a, about four or five minutes glad to have ralph here with us this morning to to lead us in uh, Amazing Grace. And uh, he came up with a great idea. While Ralph sings, why don't we hum along? All right. How about that for a deal? So uh, it is by Amazing Grace that we are here. And it is by Amazing Grace that we have the freedom that David so articulately talked about. So let us think in our minds and hum the words. Think the words and hum uh, Amazing Grace. I'll do the first and the last verse to end our meditation. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I am found was blind but now I 
And as we go from this place, may we go singing God's praise. And the best way can, we can do that is to love our neighbor as ourselves. Go in peace and go in grace. Amen.